So we're going to talk a little bit about Rabbi Steinsaltz's new book. I know from past conversations with you that this book has been a very long time in the making. And I know you told me it was very difficult for you to work on it. So tell us, please, what, what was the great challenge in this book? You've written numerous books on Hasidut Chabad. What was the challenge, and why then did you do this? <coughs> well, uh, the biggest problem about it was that the subject matter is a subject matter. Even difficult subject matter can be taken and challenged, and if one has uh, the, 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 the good will and the ability, you can explain it. The other thing is that while writing this book, which is not on something else, but something that is touching me, is a, it's a, in a way a feeling like being exposed or becoming, not becoming naked physically. It's easy to do. In fact, you see it all over America. <laughs> but to expose something that is my inner soul is much more difficult. So it's a kind of, see, it's, it's worse than, than, than a surgery. You cut not into your, into your flesh, you cut into your soul. So it was very difficult. So writing it, grappling with it, and after some time feeling that whatever I said is not enough, not powerful enough. It's not transmitting things. That was the difficulty. So it was, in a, in a way, I, 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 it had to be done. And I still don't know if I, I have done it as well as I could. In fact, I, used, I dreamt that I would do something far better, far more inspiring, something that people will say, cry and laugh, and it mostly act upon. I don't know if I did it, but I, at least I tried to. And what do you hope the book will achieve? Well, I don't know. Writing a book is not important, really. Any book, most, most of the books, books have limited, limited uh, power. Some books, even some, some of the things that I have written, pieces, have, have the ability to to make people move. And that is the, what I, I really want to do. I'm not interested, say, in writing about, about history or politics or all these, these things. I mean, if I can make a person just, just say, being touched, and not really touched. Touch is a, is a small and, and shallow feeling. I'm saying, well, people, I, I can make people jump from this place to another place. If I did it, I did something good. If now I could do it, I should have done it better and, and stronger, but I'm trying, and possibly those who read the book will be, it's, to, to quote, it's, sorry, sorry to do it, it's possibly a, a horrible Zionist uh, 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 song that was in, in Israel. There was a, a, a young woman, <laughs> really a girl, she was also some, something of a poetess, and she uh, uh, she became a, she she went with a parrot, as a paratrooper into the Nazi Nazi occupied Hungary to try to help to organize the Jews. She was captured and killed there. Anyway, she wrote a little poem that was is I cannot translate it uh, on the spot, but is blessed is the the the, the the match that, that could light hearts. So I would like to be a match. When we last spoke, you mentioned that Chabad is intellectually very difficult to approach. Did the Rebbe make it more accessible, and how? Well, I, I just today mentioned it. That I was looking at the Rebbe, watching him very much. Uh, it's not so much about 
I, I tried and possibly never was gushing in his presence. I'm not gushing in anybody's presence. But anyway, I was watching him. See, the Rebbe was not just intellectual. He was a super intellectual. He was a person that has the real, not just the quality of having an IQ of so and so. He should have something enormous if, if you could measure it by any those ways that you can measure it. But uh, he was intellectual in the sense of feeling, understanding, no. And the point was, he tried very hard to, to make these things, which he, he knew cannot be said in a, in a way, but he tried very hard to make them accessible and to make them uh, understandable. He was working, see, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to, to overstay too much, okay. and you are you are very quick on on catching my uh, my my mistakes. But I would say uh, uh, it was a okay, okay. he was trying to do. Just imagine modern rel relativistic physics for for three year olds. It's very hard to do so. so. And he was trying it. So all his writing was trying to do that. It's, it's in, in a way, some of it crossed over. Some of it crossed over by the ideas. And some of it was, he had something which was a different, different quality, which was the words were words. And the ideas, yeah. the words were words. The ideas were ideas. But he had some way see, of trans transforming things beyond words. You see, anybody who had the, the, chi the real experience, which was a very, not always common, of, of having to see the Rebbe smile, it was something that was, was something, it, it was like a sunshine in a small spot. It was something extraordinary. So, to see his, his, his smile, to see his, his eyes, which were, how do I say it, very remarkable eyes in any way. They, they look at on you. So this trans, transmitted, see, again, it's a, it's a story. It's perhaps not an not a official Chabad story that somebody came to the Alter Rebbe, the founder of Chabad, and said, <laughs> I'm a poor guy, and I don't understand what you are saying. <laughs> Can you do it in a different way that I will understand? So the Rebbe was sitting and thinking, and then he created the, the tune, the melody, that is called the Arba Mavot, which is, in a way, the, the anthem of Chabad. So he says, listen to it. You will then get in the inside of whatever I want to say. And in a way, the Rebbe was doing it, you see, in a certain way, it was the melody, the, the move, the way of he was sitting, that transmitted those things of Chabad to people who never understood it, and possibly would never understand it. So they didn't understand it in their minds, but they understood it in their soul. But you, Rabbi Steinsaltz, surely don't have that kind of difficulty and you were not raised in, in a Chabad home. You were not raised in the Chabad tradition. No. What was, it, what was it that brought you to Chabad and that turned you into a student of the Rebbe? Well, uh, I came uh, to all kinds of... My, 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 my own life, which is basically a sm small, boring life, but still, it was, I began at one part of the world, in a different way. And, but I was, you know, I was two things. My, uh, my late father, who was everywhere, and everywhere I mean everywhere, intellectually, politically, religiously, everywhere, everywhere, not in, in your just grand, in... Your one. grandfather. No, my father was father. everywhere. My father was everywhere. And he gave me 
something which I knew that whatever I do, I, did, I will follow him. It was the immense pride of being a Jew. That was a very important thing. It, it wasn't I, I, that being a Jew was something the most, the, the most important thing to be proud of. Now, my, there was another person in my family that gave me uh, something, some other notion that if you are a Jew, you are a Hossid. So I couldn't see, I couldn't perceive uh, Judaism. And I said, I know, I, I read lots of books, too many of them, and some, some religious books and some, some books by famous rabbis. But see, being a Hossid, which is the different kind of a spark that is in there, which would contain a, a different explanation, which is that the the belief, which is, you, you heard some of it all, all over, which is that, that you can take everything as a pebble, a, a piece of wood, or even a human person, and make it into a, and make it into a shining sun. That is a part, an in, inside part of Hasidism. So it was that. Now, I was searching for it. I was searching for it, and finding somebody that, this is not just answering questions, but a person that I, I could feel, and I tried to, to experience many times. So what, what age were you at the point what? that, what age were you, how old were you when you first encountered Chabad? Oh, uh, well, uh, in, in, in a funny way, I, I, my sandek, my godfather, was a Chabad rabbi and from a very famous lineage. So it was a very early encounter. But uh, <laughs> it wasn't intellectual, unluckily. But uh, I, I was, I would say, it was about at the, at the age of, of 15, when I was so, so, so very sure how clever I am that I began, <laughs> that I began then to to search for somebody that, and I try to explain it about the Rebbe, to try to meet some, to see somebody that is great. Now, in, the, in my life, and let me just anticipate, in my life I saw not just famous people, quite a number of them, and, but I saw people with great accomplishments in different fields, from science and politics and literature, in in, in poetry, in art, everything. But they were, what I'm, I'm trying to say, to explain, they were, they are, all of them are peacocks. Now, I'm not trying to be offensive, but I see, I happened, because of, again, it's the, one of my stories, but anyway, I hope I happened to see a plucked peacock. It is surely not a beautiful thing to look at. It, it, looks like a, it looks like a specially thin, ugly hen. Okay, but a peacock in its glory is glorious. See, the, the tail of a peacock spread is one of the most glorious sights. But if you think about it, it's the tail of the peacock. The peacock himself is what it is. Now, I saw many people who are like this. He has a big tail of science, or the other person has a big tail of power. The other fellow has a big tail of other things. But they are, they are small people. I don't say about if they are ugly or not, but small people, <laughs> see. Encountering the Rebbe was, he said, I don't know how to measure it, but you see, Let's imagine that I'm coming, I come and I meet, I have a s small meeting with Mountain Everest. I don't, I cannot measure it on the spot, how many meters it is, but I know that that, that is something that is really big. It's not a show, it's not a peacock, it is something, so, the, so in that way it was, I was attracted to that because, and I think that Many other people were attracted. They, what they saw was the immense thing, the, the real greatness. They didn't know how, what it is and they couldn't measure it, but still, that was the greatness. That was attracted.
you you are involved in in projects that are world that have made you world famous that are world famous among them the famous translation of the Talmud into modern Hebrew and into English you lead yeshivas in schools in Israel and elsewhere I believe and you have written prolifically on Hasidut Chabad and many other many many other topics how has the Rebbe informed your work in all of these areas? Well, it was strange because uh, uh, the Rebbe, I don't, I don't know, is it, is it, uh, it's possibly a shameful secret to tell, so I would skip it. Then is we want to hear it. Then we certainly want to hear it. No? Of course everybody wants to hear. If it's a, see, a, many, many, many years ago, I'm telling my shameful secret. Many, many years ago, I was, uh, I was just with the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, you are writing from time to time to the newspapers. You should write more, and more, and more. And so I said, but I have a possibly a bad habit. I am not good at writing for the shelf. So I, if I cannot just write just so, so the Rebbe said, look, if, if, you, if you agree, you begin to write, I will pay you. I will pay you. And he said, I possibly won't pay like the biggest newspapers, but it will be a fair pay. Now, my shame is that I didn't take the offer. I, I just, I was so astonished. So, the, the, by, by such an offer, that the Rebbe wants me to write. He doesn't tell me what. You write. And so, so in that sense, I would say I got lots of encouragement. Yes. So in that sense, I got lots of encouragement for the Rebbe. And whenever I, there was something, I, I wrote a little booklet here, there, something else, and I didn't immediately send it to the Rebbe, the Rebbe would scold me. Why didn't you send it to me? Okay, so uh, whether he liked it or did, didn't like it, but he and made, were, were there times that he didn't like it? Oh, he he. I remember once about a book that I had lots of of problems with, and but with the Rebbe, I knew that if he got it, a small booklet, he possibly read it. The only but he had a, he wrote a, he wrote a comment. Why is the picture on the front on the front page so and so? So what could I say? I could say that's a picture of my doorway, and I couldn't, I couldn't make the publisher change it. But that was he was scolding me. So on the other hand, I was thinking, if that is the only fault in my, in my writing, that, so it's possibly not so bad 